I've been helping Form Labs run over 30 plus live broadcasts around the world to help educate uh, 20,000 plus uh, working professionals in engineering, manufacturing, dental, medicine, um, and jewelry, etc. And it's just been really interesting to see uh, how people uh, want to learn about stereolithography and how uh, the Form Labs machines can fit into their day to day workflows. So, yeah. And then we have Adam here as well. Hey there, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Damiano. I'm on the print process engineering team. Uh, our goal of our team is to seek and understand the nuances of 3D printing and then to take that understanding in order to make a better printing process. I've been here for three years now. I joined right on the tail end of Form 2 development and have been with the Form 3 series printers from their conception up till today, making sure that the print process works well and gives us the results we want. Thank you, Adam. Uh, thanks for int introducing yourself. Um, Great, so Adam's going to join us in a moment here. I'm going to do a little bit more of an introduction, um, and then we'll continue on with our presentation. So see you soon, Adam. Thanks. All right, well, um, let's continue on with our presentation. So today you're going to learn how to use the Form 3 to 3D print consistent, accurate parts, and whether our latest desktop printer is the right choice for you. Uh, before today, you might be familiar with having long lead times from outsourcing 3D printing, maybe waiting a while for a service bureau to you know, you know, give your uh, parts back to you. Um, you might be also considering investing in a 3D printer, but you're unsure about which one to choose. Or maybe you have a Form 2 and you're curious about upgrading. So after today, I hope uh, that you're going to understand how our new print process, low force stereolithography, works. You're going to learn how to use the Form 3 to consistently create flawless prints and what new features make the Form 3 the most reliable, scalable Form Labs 3D printer yet. And lastly, we hope for people who are familiar with us and have a Form 2, you'll know what's changed between the Form 3 and the Form 2. Um, brief look at today's agenda, we're gonna do an intro to Form Labs. We're gonna do an introduction to LFS technology. Uh, specifically, we're gonna dive into um, how the flexible tank works. Adam's gonna be um, able to um, you know, talk about the flexible tank, uh, jump into the light processing unit, talk about linear illumination, uh, talk a little bit more about the new sensors in the Form 3, and, and we'll uh, explain some product specs related to that. And then we'll go into a workflow on using the Form 3. Uh, we're going to go into how you prepare your design and preform, how to use the Form 3 machine, and then a few steps on uh, post-processing. Um, and then next steps and how you can get started, and then, like I mentioned, a live Q&A at the end. We've been known for creating high quality professional stereolithography printers. Uh, a lot of you guys know about us, so I'm going to try to breeze through this. Uh, this is Max Lebowski, our CEO and founder here at Form Labs. Back in 2011 at the MIT Media Lab, he had a dream. He wanted to create the first desktop sized stereolithography printer at an affordable price point and was super easy to use. And we've delivered on that dream ever since with our flagship product that we've iterated on over um, a few times in the past seven years. We've sold uh, and shipped the highest volume of professional 3D printers worldwide, and we've sold 50,000 printers around the world. And with these 50,000 printers, people have printed 40 million plus parts. That's an astounding number, and uh, just, there's so many applications people have printed on, upon. So uh, a few examples. Uh, in Google, in their ATAP division, uh, they were creating this wearable device. So in the pre-production validation stage during their overmolding uh, uh, processes, they decided to actually bring a fleet of Form Labs printers in-house and by doing so, reduce turnaround time for a crucial component by 85%. In result, that saved them over $100,000. Then we have Razor Maker by Gillette. Gillette was able to launch an entirely new business model thanks to bringing Form Labs printers in-house. So this is a business where Consumers today can go online and choose between 48 different designs and customize their handles with their names on them. And these razors and handle, the handles are 3D printed. Uh, so the Gillette is using FormLabs machines on a day-to-day, -day, around the clock basis to end use, uh, create these parts, which is astounding. Um, then we have Ashford Orthodontics, the largest ortho lab in the United Kingdom. And they have a fleet of 12 FormLabs printers to help them produce 1,200 clear liners and retainers every month. Lastly, you might be familiar with Stranger Things. Um, in season two, they needed to create this creature you see pictured. And so Aaron Sims, the agency, digitally designed the model, but actually brought Formlabs printers in-house so that they could uh, produce the model, 3D print it, uh, and have it just right, ready for them and available so that they can uh, show it to their directors like within the day. 
And that just you know changed things for them because they didn't have to wait anymore. They didn't have to outsource. Um, so 3D printing market has been expanding. By 2022, the market will be at $22 billion in sales. This means that job shops, factory floors, and businesses worldwide are really investing in 3D printing. The number of applications for it are expanding rapidly. You know, prototyping was one of the common use cases for 3D printing for a long time, and it still is. Um, but going forward, you know, anatomical models uh, started being 3D printed. So, so same for um, clearliner models, uh, even replacement parts and factory floors and jigs and fixtures and customized tooling. And we're on the cusp of the future end of 3D printing applications where we're seeing more production level applications like 3D printed dentures, general purpose plastic parts, and even athletic shoes. So this speaks to our mission statement here at Form Labs. We're expanding access to digital fabrication so anyone can make anything. That is our goal, and we're hoping that could be you. So we're doing that with the Form 3. It's the next generation of industrial 3D printing powered by low force stereolithography. So uh, for people not familiar with stereolithography, uh, when we launched our flagship machine, we wanted to reduce the footprint size of the machine. And to do that, we inverted the stereolithography process. Um, by doing so, we introduced peel forces. Peel forces occur when the part is being separated from the surface of the tank. And so our goal with the Form 3 was to reduce those peel forces. So I'm going to invite Adam back into the picture here to go into low force stereolithography and how this technology works in the Form 3. So uh, Adam, you can take the floor from here. All right. Hello again, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to share with you kind of low force stereolithography. This is an upgrade to stereolithography that we've been developing in-house for the past three years. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through kind of what it is and why we did it and what that means for you. So kind of the, to start off with the benefits, the benefits of the LFS process are kind of multiple. You get incredible part accuracy, smooth surface quality, and much simpler post-processing. Uh, and kind of from the process standpoint, there are a couple of things that we look at as we're making a new product or a new printing process. Uh, generally, there are five ways that we improve uh, a printing process, dimensional accuracy, surface quality, mechanical properties, print speed, and post-processing. Now, of these five, there are four that are very directly correlated to the hardware that we're using. And these are things that we kept in mind when we were developing the Form 3 series printers. Uh, so to kind of uh, dig into the process itself, uh, low force stereolithography has two main components that make it work, a flexible tank and a linear illumination. And it's with these two main points uh, that we're able to turn liquid resin into high quality parts. So I'll be doing a deep dive now, uh, going into first the flexible tank and then the linear illumination engine and explain what they're all about. So here you have pictured the flexible tank. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. And now a kind of an animation to kind of show what it looks like while it's printing. Uh, you can see that that base of the tank is now made from a flexible film. Uh, it's kind of tensioned and pulled tautly, but at the same time, it's free to bend and flex and deflect. Uh, with the exception of what's supported by the light processing unit. The light processing unit is that black box that you see translating back and forth left to right. That has two rollers on it that will support the flexible tank and make sure that the cure plane is rigidly and well-defined while the rest of the tank can remain flexible. So the flexible tank, what does it offer us? It gives us pr uh, lower print forces and this allows us to deliver a higher quality and print reliability. Now, to explain kind of where the low forces are coming from, I'm gonna walk you through some illustrations. So what, one of the th first things that happens in a layer is the squish. So this is when we bring the part down to where it's going to be printed. Now, if you're bringing that part down onto film on glass or a PDMS tank, there's gonna be a high force event there. And the reason why is if you can imagine like taking two parallel plates and kind of putting something viscous in between them, uh, like honey or uh, in our case, resin, uh, when you bring those two plates together, as they get really close, the forces get really high. Uh, so to kind of avoid that high force event, the flexible tank actually will deflect out of the way just naturally. So this makes the squish a very low force process. And then what happens while we're lasing is the light processing unit will come across and as it's coming by, it will kind of squeeze the resin out. This is kind of akin to getting, kind of rolling out toothpaste from a toothpaste tube. It's a very gradual event, it's progressive, and it's low force. So this will kind of continue progressively throughout the entire layer 
up until the entire layer has been printed, at which point the part will lift up and the film will gently kind of separate away. And yeah, the film relaxes and you're ready to print the next layer. To tie everything together, here's kind of a, a moving animation. Uh, you, here you can see kind of the squeeze action as the, uh, as the light processing unit is lasing from left to right. Then after the layer is printed, the part comes up, the film gently kind of relaxes. The entire uh, kind of process is low force from start to finish, which has a lot of advantages. But I kind of want to dig into those advantages now. So when we have a low force uh, process, we're able to deliver incredible detail and surface finish. Uh, this kind of wing model that you see here went through no kind of additional post-processing, uh, and it just comes out the way it uh, does, partly in due to the low force. So the reason why is that when we kind of lays a layer, it's not in it doesn't have its final mechanical properties yet. It's in this weaker state that we call the green state. And in this green state, if it experiences high forces or large viscous stresses, it'll actually kind of roughen up the surface. And so kind of fine features won't be preserved as well, and surfaces will be roughened. Now, when we have a low force process, we're able to get parts that look like this with incredible details and great surface quality. And uh, what does that mean for you? So if you're doing engineering or prototyping, any tolerances that you need to hit, or if you have like clearance holes or snap fits, all of these kind of fine features and dimensions will be preserved with much greater accuracy. Uh, if you're doing kind of sales, marketing, or cosmetic models, the number of steps that kind of exist between the part coming off the printer to its final presentation state are much fewer because you don't have to work as hard to make it look good. It looks good right out of the printer. And then finally, if you're dealing with fine features, uh, because of the low force, we're able to create smaller features, fine filigree, mill grain, uh, and a variety of things. Uh, and then additionally, one of the biggest uh, excitements about kind of the low force process is easier support removal. Because it's low force, we're not only able to make the touch points smaller, but we're able to use few of them for every single part. And we'll, we'll have some demos that we'll go through later, but kind of as you see it here is uh, very much how the process is. One hand on the build platform, another on the part, and you can simply just kind of break, break the model away. Uh, so that's convenient for post-processing time, but also really convenient if you have cosmetic parts that you'll need to sand later. Uh, with this new process, they're able to be kind of less spots to sand, and they're going to be much smaller and easier to kind of sand away. Uh, so what does this mean? This means that you're spending less time post-processing and more time focusing on your product or whatever you're doing with our 3D printers. So in summary, uh, that's the flexible tank. This is kind of the secret to what gives us a low force process, which contributes to the great surface quality and easier support removal. So now one of the other main technology uh, kind of increases that we've added to this new process is the light processing unit. Now there's a lot going on in this black little box, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of all the steps and what's happening and why it's important. So here's the kind of side view of the light processing unit. You can see that silver kind of rectangle in the center, that's the laser, and it directs the laser down towards a galvanometer. A galvanometer is kind of a motor with a small little mirror attached, and this is what we use to steer the, the laser path. After it hits the galvanometer, it reflects off of a fold mirror, on the top of the light processing unit, and then it's then directed back down to the parabolic mirror. Uh, this parabolic mirror, we're pretty excited about it. We developed it in-house, and it's parabolic in kind of both axes. And what this allows is that no matter where the galvanometer is pointing, the laser beam is always coming straight up to the cure plane. So you get very consistent kind of print quality no matter where the lasing is happening. Now, you may have noticed that this just has one galvanometer, and so we'll only scan the laser front to back. To illuminate and kind of capture the whole build area, we then translate the entire light processing unit left and right. And this is driven by a very precise stepper motor, uh, and this is how we can illuminate the full build area. So what, is, what does this system offer? So it offers pinpoint precision. With that precision stepper motor, uh, we're able to have full steps of 25 microns, and the pointing accuracy of the galvanometer is 2.5 microns. So all in all, this gives us a kind of 25 micron XY resolution, so we can point with kind of a precision and accuracy that we've never been able to do before. And then additionally, we've also decreased the size of the spot. So the laser spot now is 85 microns, so your finer features will be on that scale. Uh, so there'll be finer features, uh, so you can do more uh, for jewelry, dentistry, and as I said before, engineering, uh, snap fits, uh, holes, fine features. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's the precision. And what that offers is more accurate parts, yeah, finer features and less post-processing. Uh, we've gotten much better at kind of stacking layers one on top of another, and this really diminishes layer lines. And then additionally, we're also doing some kind of tricks in how we expose the resin. We're anti-aliasing in X, Y, and Z, and this allows uh, layer lines to nearly vanish. All right, additionally, consistent printing. As I said, uh, with that parabolic mirror, there's a lot going on. Not only are we coming up vertically, but the laser spot, shape, and intensity is consistent no matter where we are. So it's always in focus and always the same. So uh, we get a uniformity that's unparalleled. There's no preferential area and location of where to print. Everything will be exactly the same. And then additionally, one thing that's kind of not illustrated uh, here, but inside the laser module itself is a spatial filter. This is important because laser modules, they're all not created the same. Uh, what happens is you have kind of the main kind of peak power in the center of the laser beam, and then at the tail ends, you have kind of stray light. This is noise, this is unique to every single laser module design, and it introduces kind of uh, a not crisp part, and it introduces kind of some variability printer to printer. By including a spatial filter, we effectively cut out all of these tails and stray noise so that every single spot is uh, the same one to the next, and there's no kind of noise created. So between this kind of consistent printing uh, where the spots everywhere are the same and also this crisp and clean printing, we're able to make uh, parts that come out the same printer to printer, batch to batch, kind of location to location where you are in the print area and uh, part to part uh, will be consistent, uniform and crisp. And additionally, it's more reliable. So in the way that we've kind of folded everything into this tight compact area, we're able to seal it up very well from the elements. So this is going to withstand kind of humidity and dust much better and should extend the longevity of the light processing unit. So just to kind of recap, low force stereolithography is made possible with two main, two main features, uh, the flexible tank and linear illumination. And that's what gives the incredible part quality and printer reliability that you'll expect from a Form 3. Uh, but that's not everything. Uh, so the Form 3 also has many integrated sensors, uh, some which are upgrades to what we've had on the Form 2 and others which are brand new. Uh, and these kind of enable nonstop printing uh, and reliability uh, that we're pretty excited about. So it would take too long to go through them all. However, I will highlight some that are, uh, that are particularly exciting. So we have a robust res resin level sensing. Uh, this will ensure that the resin in your tank is always at a consistent height and it will kind of automatically dispense from the cartridge. Uh, we have slightly changed how we're doing the technology here to make it uh, more robust, more reliable, and also more future-proof. There's some kind of exciting things in the work by our materials development team, uh, some very exotic resins, and this uh, resin level sensor will be uh, kind of much more accommodating to places we want to go in the future. And then additionally, we are also weighing the cartridge now. So the cartridge that you put into your printer will be able to accurately know how much resin is in that cartridge. So before you're starting a print, we'll be able to, with great confidence, say you will or you will not have enough to uh, kind of complete the print that you send to the printer. Uh, also, there's a lot going on optically. Uh, throughout the print, we're continuously monitoring and correcting for scale and power changes in the optics. And then additionally, at the start of the print, this is one of my favorites, uh, we're detecting dust to prevent print failures. So at the start of every print, it does this kind of internal scan and it can tell if you have the smallest little flake of dust that might be interfering with your optics. And the kind of light processing unit will come out, it'll ask you just to clean that spot off and then, uh, and then you'll be able to start your print. Uh, and this is great because it'll make sure that the printer is going to be making for you the parts that you expect. Uh, another thing as well, uh, we've changed how we do thermal management. Uh, and the reason being is like kind of on the process development side uh, to achieve the dimensional accuracy and specifications that we uh, that were promising, uh, we kind of tune all of our material files to a specific resin temperature. So the more kind of the better that we can maintain that temperature, the more consistent curing conditions we're going to get for your part. Uh, so for the Form 3, we have a nice kind of gentle airflow that passes over the resin, and this gives us uh, really excellent temperature uniformity within the resin, which gives much more consistent printing. Uh, and then finally, another thing that people have been asking about for quite some time now, uh, when can I remote print? Uh, this is something that we'll be rolling out. So uh, you can now set up your printer in a remote state. Uh, so an example would be, uh, you know, say, say you're at work uh, and where, where your printer's at and you have the part that you want to, or you don't yet have the part you want to print, you can set up the printer in kind of a kind of safe remote start mode. And then you can go home or go to a different kind of remote location and send that printer or send that print to the printer uh, and have that print start remotely. 
So one of the things that we have to just make sure that you're starting it safely is we're now detecting the build platform. So you're not gonna be starting any prints without the build platform. Uh, and we can also monitor if a print has been printed, make sure that at least the build platform has come off at least uh, before the next print has begun. Uh, so yeah, so uh, for that's it for sensors, but there's also many other things. Uh, I wish I could go into more detail, um, but one thing we're really excited about is more user replaceability uh, for components that are in the printer. Uh, I think the best example of that is the light processing unit itself. Uh, we've engineered kind of all of the components to have a long lifetime and not fail. However, if they do fail, we want to make sure that it's kind of the, the minimum kind of pain or hassle as possible. So the light processing unit, should anything ever happen to it, uh, we can send you the components that you need. You can take out the light processing unit, comes off with just three simple screws. You can put your new one back in, kind of screw it in, press a button, and it will actually self-calibrate itself with respect to the internals of the machine. Uh, so instead of having kind of this workflow where you have to, something goes wrong, you have to box up the whole printer and send it back and wait for refurbishment and then get it back finally. Uh, here you can just get uh, the part you need sent to you, sw quickly swap it in, click self-calibrate, and a minute later, you're off and printing again. So we're pretty excited about that. So just to kind of summarize kind of the technology that's in the Form 3, uh, it's run by low force stereolithography 3D printing, uh, which gives us great quality and printer reliability. It's powered by two main things, the flexible Form 3 resin tank, uh, which gives us low force, which leads to better surface quality and kind of better support removal. And then additionally, there's the light processing unit, which is kind of our most advanced optical engine to date, which gives high, high accuracy and smooth surface finish. Uh, and then finally, for the bells and whistles, a lot of new and integrated sensors to allow for kind of nonstop intelligent printing. And then just to kind of close with product specs, uh, that's why resolution of 25 microns, layer thicknesses that range from 25 microns up to 300 microns for our new draft resin. Uh, if you're prototyping and just really wanna go fast, draft resin is probably the one for you. Uh, we have an 85 micron laser spot size, which will kind of dictate the finest features that you can make. And then for the build volume, uh, we've kept backwards compatibility with the build platform as well as uh, kind of the form wash. So we've kept the build area the same at 5.7 by 5.7 inches. Uh, however, we've slightly extended the build height to 7.3 inches. The laser powered at the diode is 250 milliwatts and the price point is $3,499. So with that, that's kind of the technological deep dive of the Form 3. I'm now gonna turn it over back to Faris, who will walk you through kind of the workflow of printing on a Formlabs desktop printer. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. That was a wonderful explanation of the low force stereolithography technology. Um, Really, really great job there, Adam. Thanks for that. Um, so I know you guys probably, this is a lot of information, so please let us know your questions that you had about LFS technology, how it works, uh, or any details or specific things you want to know more about. We will cover them at the Q&A at the end. So for people familiar with uh, Form Labs, if you have a Form 2, you're going to see a lot of similar steps here in the workflow with the Form 3, but we're also going to cover some of the really exciting key differences with the Form 3. So the first step is choosing a material. So you got to pick the right material for the part that you're trying to print. Second step is a little uh, prep phase before you print with the Form 3 machine. Third step is printing on the Form 3. And fourth step is a little bit of post-processing after your part comes out of the Form 3. So um, for today's uh, demonstration and the workflow, we're going to act, be creating the speaker prototype you see in this uh, beautiful picture here. Let's try to make that uh, speaker. So we'll take the digital design of that speaker and we'll try to turn it into something physical that we can touch and feel it's been 3D printed. And my hope is that you guys uh, can follow along imagining this workflow with a digital design that you also have in mind. So uh, as with any product development process, uh, one of our designers here started sketching an idea of the speaker, uh, then brought that idea into real life into a CAD program. And the reason I mention these CAD programs is that uh, we've partnered with the CAD companies you love. We meet with them on a weekly basis. We collaborate with them on a tr at trade shows and conferences. And we even made um, software integrations with some of them. Uh, you know, whether you're using Autodesk Fusion 360, Onshape, SolidWorks, 3Shape, et cetera, We've partnered with these companies because we want to consider your entire workflow and to make your life uh, seamless and easy. It's not just about the 3D printing. We care about the full experience for you as a user and a customer. 
Um, so we're going to jump into just specifically Onshape here for this speaker example. Uh, so our industrial designer, um, Elliot here, he, he made this in Onshape, a beautiful design. And uh, let's talk about how we can uh, take that design and you know make it come to real life. So uh, we're going to pick a material. So Form Labs has a resin library of over 20 uh, different materials from advanced general purpose materials to specialty materials. Um, most of these should be available by the time the Form 3 is shipping. Uh, quick note on this though, biocompatible dental materials are currently not yet validated for a Form 3, but is one of our top priorities to validate those. So just wanted to mention that. Um, so a lot of, a good starting point for a lot of people is our standard resins. They have outstanding performance, excellent detail, uh, and they provide a matte surface finish, an opaque appearance, and precise details. So just a few examples of that. Look at this dragon here, just the wings and the rock that the dragon's sitting on, just the detail there, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, another example, just uh, you know, the sphere, uh, the geometry on this is just so clean cut and uh, it's just so straight edged. I really like how the Form 3 kind of prints that resolution. Um, and last here, this is a part within a motorcycle brake system. And in this assembly, you can see three different Form Lab standard resins being used. The gray resin, the white resin, and the black resin. And the surface quality on that is just impeccable. If you just look at closely, it's so smooth. Um, and uh, a quick shout out to a new resin we just launched. Uh, it's the Draft Resin. It allows you to draft your uh, 3D prints before you 3D print it in your favorite material to use. Um, so it actually prints about three to four times faster than most Form Labs resins. And a uh, quick note on this golf club from TaylorMade you can uh, actually set this print up uh, in the morning to finish your design, go to lunch and come back because that print right there takes you an hour and a half. Um, so anyways, for our workflow, we're going to uh, pick the gray resin to print the speaker prototype. So uh, let's jump into a prep phase right before printing. So we have a software called Preform. It's a free software that lets anyone on your team print successfully without specialized training. Uh, what Preform does is it has automatic algorithms that help you do three main things. Helps you um, set up your print's layout, uh, set up the orientation for the print, and also generate the support structures you need uh, for the print. Um, Preform also gives powerful manual controls for advanced users to edit the support size, intensity size, etc. And introducing a new feature with Preform 3 is adaptive layer thickness. This is an advanced print mode to selectively vary layer thickness throughout printing that helps you balance high detail and high speed. Um, so for people familiar with machining parts in house and you know there's a CAD CAM software step uh, which sometimes can take hours and hours with tool path generation. Uh, but I just wanted to make a shout out to the, this prepping phase and preform. Uh, you don't need to spend those hours and hours. It, it can take less than five minutes, honestly. Uh, it can take a couple minutes um, to prep your part before, to, before you start 3D printing. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that, uh, that CAD file I was talking about. So it was made in Onshape by Elliot, so I asked him to export it to me as a .stl. It could also be a .obj. And that's all you need to, to pop that file into Preform. So here it is, I'm panning around, zooming around in Preform. Uh, first step is to orient my part. So you can do that click of a button. You can change the different 90 degree rotations. And if you wanted to, you can actually just hover over that sphere um, and kind of orbit the part that way manually to, to orient the part. Preform makes it very easy, as you can tell. Second thing is to lay out the part. So if I want to make some miniature versions of the model, with the click of a few buttons, I can make uh, optimize the build volume area and try to get the most out of a single print by using Preform. So you can just click a button and duplicate that part immediately and uh, get the most out of a print. Lastly, most importantly, you got to generate your supports. So, you click that blue button at the top left-hand corner, it says auto-generate all. Preform will automatically generate dozens or hundreds of the supports that you need. It's a very smart software and it does that in an optimal way for you. And uh, I really like that because it takes like, you know, it's really quick. It takes a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes depending on your geometry. And there you, there you are, you're ready to go actually. So all you gotta do now is click the orange button on the left. When you do that, you're going to be uh, prompted to upload your, your job. And this demo screenshot, I didn't have my printer connected, but you click that orange upload job uh, button, and there you go. Your print is now going over uh, over Wi-Fi to your printer. It's it's pretty seamless and uh, easy uh, to do that. 
And um, I like that because it kind of behaves like technology behaves in other aspects of my life. <laughs> it just goes over Wi-Fi. So there you go. The, the job gets sent to the Form 3. So now we're going to jump into a live demonstration of the Form 3. So bear with us while we uh, switch and transition to that really quickly. Cool. All right. So let's jump into that. Bringing our form three a little closer to the camera for y'all so it is easier to see. Fantastic. Cool. All right. We'll strip over one. All right. Oh, I did triple. All right. I got it. Sorry about that, guys. That was the power cable. But this is a good example to show you how Form Labs and the Form 3 is a plug and play machine. So the power cord came out, but you plug that back in and the Form 3 starts up again. So um, it really is um, that intuitive, intuitive to get started with the machine when you take it out of the box and kind of uh, get going. So we're going to give it a brief moment here while it loads. Um, and you know, this is a live demo for people who were wondering earlier. Is this really live? Well, it really is, because otherwise you wouldn't have done this. So, <laughs> uh, while that loads, I'm going to talk about the three main components of using the Form Three. Um, so, the first component we have is the tank. So, right here, I'm going to show you the tank. There is a cover, an orange cover on top, to protect it from uh, light getting inside, and uh, the bottom half of it is to protect any dust or other particles uh, touching the tank. So you can easily just open the cover, and uh, I'm going to take that cover, place it on this table beside me, and you can see the flexible tank inside here. So I'm just going to take that out, and as you can see, there is the flexible tank. You want to make sure you hold it by the edges, and um, we're going to take this flexible tank, and the first step is to actually pop it into the printer. So um, while the printer is setting up right now, oh, it's ready. I'm going to open the cover. There we go, snugly. There we go, just like that. And it clicks. And uh, the second step is to take the build platform. So here's the build platform we have here. Uh, for people familiar with the Form 2, it's actually... Um, the same build platform, We've uh, Adam mentioned that earlier and kind of made things easier for people who are already familiar with the Formlabs workflow. So just open up the lever here and take the build platform and you pop it in. And that was the second step, so you can close the cover. And the last step is to insert your material in here. So here is the gray resin material we're going to use. Uh, we chose that earlier. It's actually the same resin cartridge if you've used uh, the Form 2 before. So important step is to pop the cap here for air ventilation. You take the cartridge and you easily slide it in the back. And uh, there you go. Those are the three steps you need to um, set up your print. And now what I can do is two things. I can actually remotely start my print so I can walk away and start my print with the new remote print feature. Or I can start my print right here. So I click print and I confirm these two messages here on the screen, and click Next, and it starts to prepare to print. So there we go, now we've started our print, and it's gonna be running in the background. Thank you everyone for uh, bearing with the live aspects of this demonstration. Um, cool, so, we're going to jump back into the slide deck now. Uh, and the print's just getting started right there. It's, uh, it's really just that easy. It's what I love about the Form 3. Um, and now it's going to start printing the speaker prototype for us. So I can walk away, kind of do the other work I need to get uh, done throughout the day. Uh, so I can check my email. Um, I can you know, open up Onshape and start working on a different design. Um, or if you wanted to start the print actually towards the end of the day, you could have gone home, come back, let the printer work overnight. It's like almost like another employee that works for you. And uh, you come back and see the print's done. So um, what's great about the Formlabs workflow is it makes my life easier. So it notifies you when your print's done. So you can see it's text message that says, your job, big speaker, has finished printing. I like that because it's very convenient. Um, and then I walk up to my uh, Form 3. 
and I see that the print is ready. So um, there you go. In this picture, you can see that the speaker prototype was done and printed right in front of us. Um, and now what we have to do is the fourth step in our workflow, which is post-processing. So a quick note on that, post-processing, it's washing and post-curing are a standard part of stereolithography 3D printing. So if you're not familiar with stereolithography 3D printing or you're evaluating another stereolithography uh, printer, this process is something you always have to do, <laughs> no matter what. Um, the great thing though is with Formlabs, we've made it very easy. We've made it an easier process for you, and I'll show you how. So first step is washing your part, and the second step is curing your part. So I'm going to load you a, a load a quick video right now that's going to show you how exactly to, this works. So let's jump into that video. All right, so now the speaker part um, just came out of the Form 3 machine. Uh, for this demo video, the part is dry, but normally any part that comes off the Form 3 has a thin film of liquid resin on it. And now what we have to do is actually take that thin film out, and we can do that by washing the part. So um, there's two ways to go about this. You can directly um, take the build platform and pop it in here, and it'll go in this form wash machine, and it'll descend. Or you can take off the part first uh, if you want to wash the bottom and base of the part, which is usually more recommended. So um, I've loosened up the part here using these tools that come in the finish kit with the Form 3. Um, and you can just use this to really loosen up the bottom of this raft. As you can see here, I'm using the removal tool to remove the part off of the dough platform. Um, and so now I can just take the part off, the speaker just comes off neatly like that. And what I can do is take the speaker part and actually put, the, put it into this um, bin over here. I can just pop it in very carefully here. And all I have to do now is input the controls for time. Um, so I can change the time very easily. I can go to 15 minutes and adjust it as, as needed. But uh, for grape, the specific material and part, uh, all it needs is 15 minutes. So I just roll this up to start, click, and it automatically descends the part into the machine. This is so convenient because I don't have to get my hands wet with isopropyl alcohol. It'll do all the work for me, and I can just let the machine run and wash, and I can walk away and do what I need to do. Alright, so the part has come out of the form wash now. Um, we can just lift the part out. And you don't always need to uh, cure the part as a next step, but it is recommended um, and sometimes it is important to cure your part to increase the mechanical properties of it. So for this specific uh, speaker part prototype uh, printed in Gray Pro, um, we're going to pop this into the form cure machine. So here's the form cure right here, very similar to the form wash, it automates the whole process. Um, I can choose the settings of how long I want to cure this for and what temperature I want to do it at. You can do this at 80 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to turn it up pretty easily there to 80 degrees. And I want to do this for about 15 minutes. So I can easily change the time, scroll back, and go to 15 minutes. Um, once again, not necessary for this specific part. It doesn't need to cure. It's not going to really change the mechanical properties in this specific example. But uh, it's nice to do as a next recommended step. So if I lift open the form cure, you can see that inside is a system of uh, lights and heat that will actually evenly cure the part and it will rotate as it goes around when it's operating inside. So once I've opened it, I can neatly just place the speaker part in here, let it rest there, close the form cure, press start, and it's going to start preheating to the temperature and then actually heating at the right temperature needed and curing your part. So why use the form wash? It's an automated solution. So what I really like about it is I can take my gloves off, leave the parts on there, and it does the work for me. Um, each form wash has about you know up to 70 prints per uh, bucket of IPA in there, so you can do it many, many times, and it's an automatic workflow. Uh, go to formlabs.com to see form wash times for different materials and settings for that. Um, similarly, why use the form cure? It automatically uh, heats the part up to the desired temperature that you want it at, and it evenly cures and rotates around 
uh, the part so that it has even curing. And you can set it or forget it. You don't have to worry about the part over curing because there's a timer in there that's going to automatically stop it. So once again, you go on formlabs.com, you see this wonderful chart to pick a material and the time needed and the temperature needed to see the uh, effects on the material properties over time. So it's, it's a cool chart. Um, so the next step we have is um, taking those supports off the part. So it's been cured. And this is the great thing about low force sterilithography. It's never been easier to remove supports. Uh, and that's because LFS allows for light touch support. So I'm going to invite Adam back in here to do a demonstration and show you some parts we have uh, right now. So I'm going to turn off the presentation screen so you can see us um, fully. There we go. All right. Excellent. So yeah. Uh, hello again. So yes, uh, th these are some uh, tensile bars that we printed this morning. We're doing some kind of mechanical characterization of our parts. Um, people were asking like, what kind of touch tip sizes do you recommend? Uh, we're still developing it, but it seems to be like three to 400 microns is now a good number uh, to kind of make sure that your part comes out well. And this is down uh, 200 microns or more from kind of typical values on the form two. So certainly a lot smaller area, a lot less to clean up. Uh, and then here's kind of um, what, what, what the workflow would look like. So, so I've got my tensile bars here. Uh, it's just simple. Well, okay, that, that, that was it. Uh, it, was, it was really it was even easier than I thought it was going to be. I'll just do it again. Uh, I'll just hold it in the middle now and try to get closer. Um, but here we go, just twist and it's free. Uh, so that's uh, as, as easy as it is um, uh, for these kind of uh, new support structures that we're able to create with the low force stereolithography. Um, I've just got uh, another model here. These are some kind of uh, quarter shells. We use this as a test part. Uh, this definitely has a little more area, um, but I can just kind of like pinch some off here uh, and kind of like lift backwards and, and it came off as simple as that. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can see there, there certainly are uh, some touch points, but uh, there are very few of them uh, compared to kind of other other printing processes and, and they're really small and easy to get off. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a, a live demo of what the, the supports really are like. Um, and yeah, we're really excited to be able to uh, print like this now. So yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Adam. I am amazed. I haven't seen the tensile bars before. Um, so just like to quickly show you, I mean, just that, that was incredible. The supports just ripped off seamlessly for you right there. Um, really, great new benefit of, of the Form 3 and LFS technology. So we're going to jump back into the presentation here really briefly. And there we go. So uh, thanks, Adam, for that demonstration. Here's another video example of how easy it is to take off these light touch supports. Just that, that seamless motion. Oh, it's beautiful. So um, once you do that to the speaker prototype, it's obviously a different model, a different geometry. But once you, you know, take the supports off there, um, your prototype is complete. It's ready. Uh, depending on the model, sometimes there'll be some nub marks, um, you know, like right here. You can always take a little bit of sandpaper and uh, sand that off. Depends on your application, really. I mean, if you're model making, obviously, you want to spend more time sand, uh, sanding it and stuff. But yeah, there we go. That's, that's all we need to do to get the speaker prototype uh, 3D printed and ready for, for the, your application. So reviewing that workflow that we just went through, we chose the gray material, had really good uh, surface finish and high detail for, for what we needed to do. We prepared the design within a, honestly, it took me like five minutes, less than five minutes when I did it. Uh, then we printed the part. It took a couple minutes just to set that up and operate it. And now the Form 3 is running right now, actually, as we speak. Uh, and uh, post-processing, hands-on time, like actual end-user time, it took me like four minutes to really uh, be involved with the post-processing there. So uh, there we go. You know, anyone can learn how to use the Form 3 in minutes. Uh, the barrier to entry to use this technology is very low. Um, recapping the Form 3. So we have intuitive hardware and software all around. So it's not just the printer. It's the software that supports it as well. And uh, it's a small footprint. It's a plug-and-play machine. You guys got to see that earlier, uh, how plug-and-play it was. <laughs> um, and the Form 3 can be distributed throughout the company. Uh, this is something, this is a piece of hardware that can really scale rapidly because of its small footprint and uh, how easily it can be picked up by so many different departments around your company. 
Um, and that speaks to one of our missions here at Form Labs. We want to make it very easy for you to grow with Form Labs. So you can get multiple Form 3s and scale like those other company examples I mentioned earlier with Gillette and Asheville Orthodontics and um, et cetera. So um, our product line really quick snapshot, we have the Form 3, which we just uh, kind of discussed today, and then we have the Form 3L, which has uh, five times the build volume of the Form 3. That will be shipping later this year. And um, we have a materials library, and we have accessories to help you post-process, and we also have um, software and services to help you, and let me touch base on that really quickly. So we have an online dashboard system that helps you manage your printers, materials, and teams that use the different uh, materials and printers. And a brand new feature called a remote print, uh, which you can do through dashboard. So uh, we also have um, a, you know, people here on our services team that are dedicated to help you. So in our pro service plan, you'll be, really be able to rely on our services team to make sure your answers and questions are solved and that everything goes smoothly for you. I love this personally because it's always good to have the comfort in the back of your mind that there's a real support team that will be able to help you at the end of the day. Uh, because with all technology, it's always good to have a human on that other end of the phone line. So um, I made a kind of a promise about ho hopefully what you guys could learn earlier this uh, presentation. and. I hope we've delivered on that. So we hope that now you can get started with and use a Form 3 3D printer in your workspace today. We hope that that workflow is much more clear to you now. And uh, as a recap, with the Form 3, you'll be able to have incredible part quality, easy support removal, and nonstop printing. Um, so quick notice for people who have the Form 2 already. Um, if you have one already, you can save $500 on the purchase of the Form 3. We have a loyalty discount for you. Check out the link right there. And we have a referral program. So if one of your referrals purchases a Form 3, they get $500 off their order. And you also get $500 to use on materials or accessories. It's a win-win situation. Check out the link for that referral program. Um,